Well, she he come in her lane, so she probably went to the other yeah. lane to miss him. <laughs> Street racing is as dangerous as they come. And people who do this for a living or as a hobby know that no matter how careful, skilled, and experienced they are in driving powerful cars, accidents happen. Viewers were shocked when they witnessed how the race between Trisha Day and her husband, J.J. DeBoss, in Discovery's Street Outlaws America's List, ended in a horrific crash. The reality television show Street Outlaws gave an inside look into the street racing scene in America, primarily in Oklahoma. It caught the attention of car and racing enthusiasts from all over when it premiered on 10 June 2013. And with its success, Discovery launched several spin-offs. Trisha Day appeared in some of them. As exciting and popular as the shows are, the National Hot Rod Association, the NHRA, the governing body of drag racing, was absolutely incensed because some of their members appeared in it when they knew full well that they couldn't or shouldn't condone street racing which was not only illegal, but also potentially ultra dangerous. Those who engaged in this type of motorsport, whether spontaneous or coordinated, usually had no regard for safety, as the races were held on public roads, where bystanders could get hurt and properties could be damaged or destroyed. The controversial TV series claimed that the races were real, but perhaps to assure the public and those concerned, they said that the races in every episode were conducted with safety protocols in place within a controlled environment. However, even if it was scripted, the NHRA didn't want to send the wrong message to the public that it was okay. In 2015, it sent letters warning its members that their licenses could be revoked should they continue to participate in a show that glorified street racing. As the letter to one of the members was posted online, the NHRA received criticisms from fans and supporters of the show. Considering that the original series was still airing after a decade, it appeared that the matter has been settled. If Oklahoma had Justin Big Chief Shearer at the helm, Memphis had Jonathan Day, better known as J.J. DeBoss. Unlike Team OKC, the drivers in Memphis didn't have to compete to make it onto the list of the fastest cars. For them, it was all about racing, hustling, and betting. JJ revealed how people from the network approached him about doing a reality TV show, but he refused at first, saying that he didn't street race for a living, but because it was something that he loved and believed in. Then a producer came and somehow convinced him to agree. He was told that should he agree, the cameras would be there to film them doing what they normally would during a race, without the production interfering or doing anything that would disrupt them. The show premiered in 2018, and JJ was proud to say that it wasn't scripted at all. Most members of his team, such as Jeffrey James driving a 1996 Corvette, Big Block Killa, Kenneth Gully, 2003 Chevy S10 Bounty Hunter, and Jason Ainsworth, 1969 Camaro Prosecutor, who were introduced in the show, grew up together in a small town of 700 outside of Memphis. Street racing was very much part of their lives and community, as they were out racing every Sunday after going to church. Their family and friends have been racing for decades, and if one of them loses, they all lose. That's the kind of relationship that they have. Precious Cooper, dubbed the Queen of the Streets, was someone who was initially romantically linked to JJ before people knew of Trisha Day, his wife. JJ said that there was nothing crazy or immoral going on between them, even if she took care of his bills and he helped her in turn. Also, Trisha and Precious grew up as friends and remained close as adults. In his early 20s, JJ bought and then modified a 1967 Nova, nicknamed Heifer. It was his personal car, but Trisha drove it. He also built the Ole Heavy, a 1949 Chevy, and Precious was known for driving that. One of the things that people were most curious about was how they evaded the police. JJ didn't outright say that they had an arrangement with law enforcement, but for as long as they kept the street races away from schools, churches, hospitals, or other places where people could be in danger, it seemed that they were pretty much left alone. They stayed out of trouble so the police wouldn't come after them. One of the most important rules they followed was to treat everyone with respect, no matter their religion, race, status in life, or gang affiliation. Those who street raced were stereotyped as people who used drugs to get their adrenaline up, 
but JJ was quick to clear things up. During an interview, he said with conviction that a real street racer who spent $20,000 to $30,000 on his or her car would not do drugs. With money to be had in street racing, there were all kinds of hustles going on. As he arranged the bets, he was often seen counting all the money that came into his hands. He said that it wasn't about showing off, but more about making sure that it was the correct amount. There were times when people passed off counterfeit money or gave him a stack of money that was short of $100, so the amount didn't tally up to what it was supposed to be. Street racing was dominated by men, but it didn't mean that there weren't any women who were up for the challenge. In 2021, Discovery Channel launched another spin-off series featuring the fastest female drivers in the country, such as Trisha, Precious, and Chelsea from Memphis, as well as No Prep King champion Lizzie Musi. They were joined by new drivers as they headed to Las Vegas to hustle some serious cash and street cred. As the street racing scene in various cities was made known to the public, fans were naturally curious about who was the best in the country. In Street Outlaws, Fastest in America, which premiered in 2020, eight teams competed in what was purported to be the biggest street race meeting in history, with prize money at $100,000. It was J.J. DeBoss who put the call out, and the team left standing would then race against Team Memphis. His team had an automatic spot in the finals. Trisha showed grit and skill as she faced off against Swamp Thing from New Orleans, Louisiana, or NOLA, in round one, and won by a bumper. It was a long, arduous journey for Team NOLA, but things ended in favor of JJ's team. In season two, Team Memphis won again over Team NOLA in the finals. Trisha gave her team a good start as she won against Todd in round one. Despite having a few issues during the burnout and with no time to fix them, her resolve to race never wavered. Trisha Wayne Day said that street racing had been a family thing. Ever since she could remember, she'd been around cars and racing. What excited her most, more than crossing the finish line first, was getting back to the starting line and seeing her family so happy. She's doing this more for them than her. She and JJ had been married for over a decade, and despite the 10-year age difference between them, their relationship remains strong. They have four children together, although in all, JJ has 11 kids, but there's no information about previous relationships. The spin-off series, Street Outlaws America's List, was patterned after Oklahoma's famous The List Racing, in which drivers competed to get to the top of the list. For the first season, the baddest and the fastest in the country raced their way to the top. In season two, premiered in 2022, no one could have foreseen what happened in the race as Trisha and JJ battled it out on the asphalt road. Something went wrong with JJ's car as it suddenly caught fire and he lost control, hit Trisha's car and then rolled over it before ending in a ditch in a relatively soft landing. As for Trisha, the impact sent her off the road and she hit one of the production crew's vehicles that was parked in the area. JJ was hurt too, but he got out of his car and immediately went to her. She was screaming and seemed at a loss at what to do, as she couldn't extricate herself from a car that was on fire. His voice could be heard, saying it was going to be okay as he tried to get her to calm down. The fire was extinguished and he got her out. As she was lying on the ground with the paramedics checking her condition, she could be heard crying and moaning in pain as she said that she was hurting all over. She and JJ were rushed to the nearest hospital. The rest of the drivers checked out the damage to the cars and tried to make sense of what had happened. Murder Nova, the race master, said that they were as safe as they could possibly be because what they were doing was stupid enough as it was. One can only imagine how hard it was for JJ, having been the one to accidentally hit his wife's car and cause it to crash. Then there was also the thought that in one night, their children could have lost both of them. They both knew the risks involved in street racing but this was something that they were passionate about. This wasn't the first time that the couple raced against each other. In the first season of America's List, the two went at it as they were next to each other on the list. Everyone was having fun as they joked around on who was going to win, with Trisha and JJ saying that they would give it their all. With him driving the Hummingbird and her behind the wheel of Zip Tie, she won the race and took his spot at number eight while he went down to number nine. JJ said that the crash was the hardest night of their lives. It was bad, but it could have been worse. 
he was grateful that she was alive, saying that no one was tougher than Tricia. He sustained various burns to his hands and face, but was discharged from the hospital earlier than his wife, who had to undergo hip surgery. After a long wait, Tricia was finally back home, met by their kids with big hugs. JJ said that they had a tight-knit family, so it was expected that everyone was worried about her. He said that the toughest part was not having her around. Tricia couldn't help but cry as she said that in 15 years, this had been the first time she'd been away that long from the entire family. He recalled having a tough time telling his kids that he and their mom had been in an accident, explaining her injuries to them and that she would be in a wheelchair for a while. He told them that she had done so many things for them before and this was their time to pay her back by helping her with things she couldn't do by herself. They had to get her healthy and back on her feet. JJ told Trisha he knew how strong and determined she was, but she had to let them do something for her. She went live on Facebook in April 2022, expressing her gratitude for the outpouring of love and support she and JJ had received throughout their ordeal. There were things that she had been blessed with that she'd taken for granted, such as being able to walk. It scared her that she was unable to do that for a while. Her injuries were serious. She broke her hips and doctors had to put two screws on each side. As she was wearing her seatbelt on impact, it cut her neck and pulled a muscle. As for her recovery, her doctors told her that it could take up to six months before she could walk again. But after two months, she was up and about. Fans were updated on her progress as she or JJ would often go live on social media. As soon as he was able, with his eyes still a bit swollen and his hands wrapped in a bandage, JJ went to the film site where the Oklahoma guys such as Ryan Martin, Daddy Dave, and Murder Nova were waiting for an update on him and Trisha. He talked about the crash and said that the motor or the head gasket blew, so he was getting sprayed with oil, and then it ignited. It all happened so fast, so he had to gather himself and act quickly as he was being burned alive. He called Trisha on the phone and the guys wished her a speedy recovery so as to come back and join them. She was in really good spirits and as expected from someone who was passionate about racing, she said, Heck yeah, y'all just make sure y'all get my car ready. Don't take my spot. Getting back behind the wheel to race again was nerve-wracking for people who have been in a car crash. JJ DeBoss returned to the competition at the urging of his wife, Trisha, telling him to fix Hummingbird so he could race again. His team worked hard to ensure that every part that went into it was in good condition. They even used the motor from another one of his cars named Zip Tie, so it was going to be fast. He was excited to return to the racing scene as he was doing it for Trisha. In his first race after the crash, he won against Kai Kelly. Trisha was first seen in the show after the crash in a wheelchair, giving a necklace to the winner of the race that night. As for her return to racing, it happened during JJ's arm drop event in the last quarter of 2022. It was a great night for everyone, especially her friends and fans, as they saw her race as she used to, as though the crash never happened at all. Race cars were usually constructed not just to make them faster and more powerful on the road, but also to keep the drivers safe. Viewers had witnessed drivers and street outlaws lose control over their cars and flip several times after they hit another car or a concrete barrier. But they were very often able to walk away, mostly with minor injuries. Trisha's case might be different and gave everyone, particularly her family, a scare. But she made a full recovery and has returned to street racing. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.